Following the collapse of the Timurid dynasty in Central Asia and Iran, one prince, Zahiruddin Muhammad Babur, was able to hold on to power long enough to be able to invade India in 1525. After defeating the ruling Lodi dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate in 1526, he established the Timurid Gurkani dynasty, which is commonly known as the Mughal dynasty. After gaining control of North India from the local Afghans, he had barely began to put together a ruling core of the empire when he died in 1530. His eldest son, Nasiruddin Muhammad Humayun, ascended to the throne. With the Afghans eyeing his throne from the east and his own brothers from the west, Humayun almost became the second and the last emperor of the Mughal Empire. This video is brought to you by, well, you guys. Thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel and making these videos possible. Al Muqaddimah is funded only by Patreon and as you can see, the videos take a long time to research, edit and produce. And it's only because of my patrons that I am able to put this kind of time into these videos and keep them free from any kind of paywall. So if you want to pledge a dollar or more to support the channel, you can head over to my Patreon. Link is in the description. You can also become a member right here on YouTube. There's some cool stuff that comes with it. Back to the video. Humayun was born around 1508 in Kabul, where his father, Zahiruddin Muhammad Babur, was planning an invasion of India. He had led small forces for his father and had been fairly capable. However, when he became Padishah of the Mughal Empire at the age of 22, he wasn't the only ruler of the empire. His brothers were given portions of the empire to rule while remaining under the command of Humayun. This succession plan actually comes from the Turco-Mongol tradition that Babur descended from. Genghis Khan himself had divided his realm among his four sons. The idea of collective sovereignty, where all sons of the king had equal claim to the throne, was inherited from the Mongols by the Timurids and that's what Babur himself did. Kamran Mirza was given Kabul and Kandahar, Askari Mirza was given Multan and Hindal Mirza was given Malwa. Almost as soon as Humayun came to power, the brothers started plotting to take the throne from him. Kamran marched from Kabul to Lahore to secure the allegiance of men loyal to his father. Also, taking advantage of Babur's death, the Afghan tribes of the east, who had previously been in power before the Mughals, began raiding Mughal territory. Humayun led his army east to deal with the Afghans, where Mahmud Lodi, the brother of the last Lodi Sultan, had declared himself Sultan of Hindustan. Humayun faced and defeated his army at Lucknow. Almost immediately after doing that, he got news that the Sultan of Gujarat was planning to attack the Mughals with the help of the Portuguese who had set up trading posts on the Gujarati shore. In 1535, he attacked and defeated the Sultan of Gujarat and even took some strategic forts but he failed to end the Sultan and annex Gujarat in its entirety. This was because the Afghans were back. This time they had united behind an extraordinarily capable commander named Sher Khan Suri. Humayun was really no match for Sher Khan and his army. The Afghans used guerrilla tactics in the eastern forests against Humayun, who was famous for his addiction to wine and opium. Sher Khan, on the other hand, was disciplined and collected. He was born Farid Khan in 1486 in Haryana. Because of his talent and valor, he was given the name of Sher Khan, meaning the Lion Khan, or more accurately, the Lion King. In the 1510s, he had become a freelance soldier, or as we call them, mercenaries. Mercenaries were in high demand in India due to the absence of central authority before the Mughals. Various groups militarized to protect themselves and then started selling their services. When Babur defeated the Afghan Lodi dynasty, their former soldiers, who were now out of work, united behind Sher Khan. Sher Khan was managing to pay them because he was protecting a wealthy widow from the Lodi establishment. Her money and his leadership created a formidable force. Initially, he paid off the Mughal governors with tribute to keep himself safe from them while he built power. By 1537, he was powerful enough to invade Bengal and end the ruling dynasty. He crowned himself Sultan there, changing his name to Sher Shah Suri. By this time, Humayun was aware of the threat he posed and so Humayun attacked Bengal. Sher Khan's forces melted into the interior and used guerrilla tactics. In 1538, his other younger brother, Hindal, attacked Agra, the Mughal capital, and seized the throne for himself. Kamran also marched towards Agra to strike a deal with Hindal and divide the empire among themselves. 
When Humayun heard of this news, he rushed back, but the monsoon hindered his ability to maneuver his army. Shir Shah took advantage of this and attacked Humayun, badly defeating him. Humayun was barely able to get away with his life. Humayun was able to regroup in Agra, where he pardoned his brothers and tried to present a united front against the Afghan threat. However, his brothers refused to cooperate. Kamran even withdrew to Lahore and raised his banners for independence. In May 1540, the Mughal and Afghan forces met at Kanaj where the Mughal army was defeated. Humayun withdrew to Lahore, but Sher Shah pressed on until Lahore too belonged to him. Humayun and his brother Hindal were left without land to rule. Kamran and Askari though still held some holdings in Afghanistan. Sher Shah established himself in Delhi and Agra and started to rule his new Suri empire. By all reasonable measures, he was as great a ruler as he was a commander. In that way, he reminds me of another great ruler of India, Alauddin Khilji, a man Sher Shah himself looked up to. He reorganized the way land was held by noblemen. He introduced a tri-metallic currency with the gold muhar, the silver rupiah, and the copper dam. Additionally, he understood the need for Central Asian goods, especially war horses, so he built a great road known as the Grand Trunk Road, which runs from Afghanistan to Bengal, connecting all of North India. Previously, this route was covered by many roads which weren't always in a great condition. Meanwhile, Humayun and his brother Hindal were wandering homeless across Western India looking for allies. While they didn't find many of them, Humayun did find a wife from an Indian nobleman's family. She soon gave birth to Humayun's first son, Jalaluddin Muhammad. Humayun finally got some hope from the Safavid Shah Tahmasp. He visited him in Herat first and then in the Safavid capital of Kazveen. Tahmasp, like his father Ismail had done to Babur, offered him support if he converted to Shiism. Humayun agreed. He was given an army with which he first attacked Kabul and Kandahar. Both of his brothers evaded capture, but he took both cities and started planning his invasion of India from Kabul like his father had done some 20 years earlier. The same year, 1545, Sher Shah died in a cannon accident. The road to India was becoming more open as Humayun was inviting supporters from all over India to help him in his invasion. While Humayun did that, Kamran also raised an army. Humayun finally defeated his brother in 1553, but he couldn't bring himself to execute him. After all, it's said that Babur told Humayun on his deathbed to not hurt his brothers no matter how much they deserve it, and boy, did they deserve it. Kamran was blinded and exiled to Mecca. With the Safavids on his side and the issues with his brother resolved, he invaded India. The Suri Empire had weakened by this time due to internal problems. Humayun, with his loyal general Baram Khan on his side, swept across India and finally entered Delhi in 1555 after some 15 years in exile. The Mughal Empire was back. Humayun would rule for only six months as the Padishah of Hindustan, but these six months made Mughal Empire what it would be for centuries to come. Unlike his father, Humayun seems to have liked India, given that he married an Indian Muslim woman and urged his officials to take Indian wives as well. Additionally, he didn't consider himself first among equals like his father did. He created a centralized government with him in the center. He also greeted the sun every morning, which was a quintessentially Indian tradition. Also, he reorganized the land and put as much of it as possible directly under the Mughal crown instead of noblemen. He was wise enough to see the good policies of his rival Sher Shah Suri and keep them, such as his monetary reforms. All these things started the process of making the Mughal Empire a truly Indian empire. His successor would bring this Indianization of the Mughals to completion. In January 1556, he fell from the stairs of his library in Purana Kila, Delhi. His young son, Jalaluddin Muhammad, only 13 years of age, was put on the throne. Immediately, powers from around the Mughal court began competing for influence over the boy king. However, Jalaluddin would be no one's puppet. Instead, he would be the great Shan Shah Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. On the screen right now, you can see the names and tiers of the patrons. You can join them by pledging a dollar or more to support the channel. Thank you for watching.